Do not adjust your screens. I'm looking minging. Jesus. Oh, it's not going to end well, this, is it? <laughs> I went down the wrong way. That's what she said. Somebody forgot my breakfast. It's alright. <laughs> Whenever I decide to come for a multi-day wild camp and hike, I come here to Dartmoor. The national park in the southwestern side of the United Kingdom in England. Dartmoor hosts over 350 square miles of land on which you can roam and wild camp in some parts. Hike to your heart's content. Over the next few days, I'm going to be hiking and wild camping through Dartmoor with a friend of mine, Carl, who I'm going to be meeting up with later today. Last night, I spent the evening and night time here in this permitted camping zone within the park, and I chose to bivouac, bivy bag down for the night here in this little grassed off area. I'm going to clear away my camp now, but if you'd like to see what I got up to last night, stay tuned. Right, well, while I pack away the stuff, um, I'll fill you in. So I've driven three, three and a half hours, and uh, literally tonight it's just a 20 minute walk and pit stop. And uh, this is my walk. So camp is either on the right or the left, I forget, I'll have to check the map in a minute. Just over here, this is one of the permitted camping areas that I was talking about a minute ago, where you can legally camp, wild camp, without seeking the landowner's permission prior to arrival. Right, look at this. It's not too bad, it's, uh, it's March 2018 and temperature's about 10 above freezing and uh, I'm feeling good, feeling fresh. So let's see what the evening brings. So I think I'm still in the uh, permitted zone. Um, there's not really much to choose from. I've just walked through sort of all that bramble I've come across this little patch here. I think it's going to do me nicely. The only uh, negative is the wind is blowing this way. So I'll pitch my, my bivy, sort of, hopefully something like that, so the wind doesn't blow straight through it. Blow me away. So let's see how we get along, shall we? Because I've probably got about another, let's check the old watch, probably about another 15, 20 minutes of daylight, and then it's going to be game over. And uh, with a new bivy, I want to try and set that up in the light, ideally. So I'm going to stop yakking and get cracking. Morning. Well, last night I slept in this bivy. And I say slept. What an interesting experience. But um, let me just show you around the inside of my, my bivy. This will give you an idea of the size, if you've never been in one before. It is tiny. <laughs> That's about it. But the good thing about Bivy is this. <laughs> Suddenly you're outside. I slept most of the night exactly like that with the, uh, the hood end of the bivy open to the elements and I uh, looked up at a beautiful starry night and realised what bivying is all about um, until it started to rain at about 3am so I popped the hood back up but the inside of these bivies get very um, not very damp, just a, a little bit damp, so you feel it where your, where your knees here poke out and your feet at the end. You can feel the damp coming through. Well, not coming through, but the condensation making your, your bag damp inside. And I personally uh, realise you can feel it here on your knees. 
here on your feet. Sort of, uh, cool air. Um, my hands there. And, you know, you can feel when the wind blows over. You can feel the, the coolness. Um, there's nothing to do with having a, a rubbish sleeping bag because the sleeping bag I've got is is a very good one. It's not for me. So um, one uh, one helium bivy is up for sale. <laughs> but in the night, bizarre. I mean, you can see where I am. Literally, just here. Just just look. Just over here, there's a tiny little track going that way. And this great big dirty four by four pulls up and parks just over to the right. And people started getting out. This was about one in the morning. And they had a, a con flab about God knows what, and then packed up and pulled back out around that way and momentarily stopped and obviously looked at me sitting in this bag and thinking, what the hell? And then drove off back down the track. But uh, you're yeah, really bizarre. Really bizarre. But hey ho, I survived and um, I've got my tent for tomorrow and the next night, so I'll be using that. I do see the plus sides of these things. It's really quick to, to deploy, um, small footprint, and that's the, uh, the downside as well, the small footprint being tiny on the inside and literally having no space at all. For anything. <laughs> I don't know. One minute. I like. I like the. I like the smallness in one one bit. And then in the next. Next bit I don't. Oh my goodness! It's cold. Right. I'm gonna shake a leg. So as always, leave no trace. Nothing's been left. In fact, I've picked up a few bits of litter that I found here. Leave it nice to the next person, right? I want to get back to the car now before it starts to rain. Sort out my kit. I've got a few things I need to change over. Tent and bivy bag, etc. as you know. And then uh, I'm off to meet Carl. shower using the Helio pressure shower uh, it's great for a bit of car camping and uh, water from the jerry can heated up on the Coleman dual fuel stove um, the 533 and uh, all you do is fill that up with hot water pump this little fella about 20 times and uh, hot water so it's quite a good little shower. So I mean, that's nice and hot. You can see the steam coming off there. Um, I filled up 
my MSR kettle, this fella here, about five of those, that was enough for a full shower for me. And uh, there's still enough left just to rinse the car mat down which I stood on to keep my feet protected from the stones. Yeah, not the most elegant of surroundings for a shower, but you know what, I'm in the middle of nowhere, nice boxer shorts, and I've got privacy all around me. So hopefully I didn't scare anyone. <laughs> I just think uh, it's a real, it's a real morale booster if you can get clean and have a hot shower. Or wet wipes are great, but you know I'm here for sort of four days and I'm meeting a friend in a bit, and I don't want to be minging. And after that night in that plastic bag, sorry, the bivy bag, it's uh, yeah, not for me. So I got a bit hot in there, and uh, the condensation from my body heat, all the moisture from my body. Um, went on to my clothes and everything I was wearing. So anyway, enough, enough about that, but uh, yeah. So now we are, what time is it now? It's half past eight. I'm gonna tidy up, I need to set up my bag for today, because I've got different bits of kit for different days. Tidy away the pressure washer, pressure washer? The shower, the pressure shower. And uh, I'm gonna go and pop along to a shop that Carl's recommended, and uh, an outdoor shop. And yeah, we'll go from there. So I'll catch you in a bit. All right, while I've uh, been waiting for my call to pick up Carl, you know, he's got to fill that big bag of his he carries. Thought I'd go for a little stroll in Dartmoor, as I'm obviously here. So, recognize this place? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Bueller, Bueller. Some of you will get that of a certain age. Well, this is where I camped with Dan on uh, my first trip to Dartmoor. Um, I think there was a fire pit somewhere here. Uh, I think I camped about here somewhere actually. Maybe it was just over here, I can't remember exactly. But uh, there's been a lot of branches down since I've last been here. It's very wet underfoot. I don't think I'll be hanging around too long to be honest, I've left all my wet gear in the car. It's not far from the car, it's only a five, ten minute walk. Such a great little pitch. But I came uh, up from the sort of town area where I stayed last night. Bickford or Bickingford, I think it was. I'll put it on the, on the screen there. And um, I thought I would get the drone up in an area where I've been before. But, uh, well, it's very, very misty foggy, horrible, so drones, well my drone at least doesn't like that, so but I'll come here, reminisce, <laughs> uh, still a good little spot, still a good spot, right, it's wet and horrible, so I'm going to put the camera away, and uh, next stop, Carl's, oh, I can't see myself, where am I, that's better, Oh, don't be shy. Look what I'm with. It's Dartmoor Explorer. Is that right? Yeah, Dartmoor Yay! Explorer slash Tidy Bushcraft. Carl for Sea, I think. That's it, yeah. Yeah, and we are going. Is it over there? Yeah, down in there. Down in there somewhere. Mystery Wood. It's where Carl buries all his uh, YouTubers he brings out. So this video might not come out yet. So it might not come out. So if you see this, it's probably be on Crime Watch. <laughs> It's all good, but look at this, isn't it lovely? Not long ago, it was absolutely uh, misty as anything. And we had rain earlier on. I'd hail this morning after I got out of the, uh, the awful, horrible, nasty, hateful, <laughs> I can't think of the word, bivy bag, that's it. I'm clutching at straws now. See, I've had a bad night's sleep and I can't formulate my sentences normally, but after a bad night, it's even worse. Especially when someone's listening to you trying to do your uh, your uh, your intro, isn't it? Nothing worse, isn't that right, Carl? Oh yeah. yeah so Carl's got his tiny tiny bag on the back. <sighs> I I struggle to even lift it, so I dread to think the weight. And inside he's got a full roast chicken, potatoes, parsnips, carrots, pudding, beer, uh, cider. Not just a small can of cider. Did you bring both bottles? No, just one. Just one, one big two litre bottle. 
Um, so yeah, that's all right, you can manage it. It's not a terribly long walk by all accounts. It'd be so. like you're going back. Yeah, I won't be. <laughs> so this is it. So this is day two for me, day one for Carl. So hopefully it'll be, uh, be a more fun evening for me now. I've got some company. Last night was uh, literally just a pit stop to get me down here so we could leave a bit earlier on today. Right, onwards and upwards, or downwards, I'm not sure. Something I said, I'll tell you what, fair play to him. That I reckon that weighs about 25 to 30 kilos, that bag. And he's just run all the way up there to get his camera. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is a lovely little woodland. I was just saying to the, uh, to the lovely viewers at home, that must be weighing like 25, 30 kilos, and you just run up there like it's nothing. I need a sports bra. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Something we don't want to see. <laughs> we have a problem. This is um, pretty horrible, and <laughs> so I shouldn't laugh. Poor Carl's boots, he treated them with some water repellent stuff, but they're not, not playing ball. Look at him, he's a man, look at that. He's a whole, bloody pulling a tree along now. God. Anyway, his boots are just full of water already, and I've just crossed that, and it's nearly, it's nearly breached mine. Uh, if I zoom back out, not in. Nearly breached mine. Oh, 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 I nearly missed, I nearly. Oh. It's just as bad on that side. No, it's thicker than that end. Watch yourself. <laughs> Fashioning a bridge out of a tree. Tidy Bushcraft, aka Dartmoor Explorer. that do. You got it. Now you just got to do your balancing trick. You have to call me Muddy Paws. <laughs> muddy Paws. Jesus, oh, it's not going to end well, this is it. <laughs> well, we made it. We are here in Dartmoor Explorers Permission Woodland. Tidy Bushcraft. Tidy, bu bush bu 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 tidy Bushcraft. Dartmoor Explorer and whatever else he's called himself by the time this video comes out. So there's the man himself. Um, most important thing is not your shelter first, it's a beer or an IPA in this case, an Earl Grey IPA. Very nice it is too. A Yeasty Boys, hmm. Waitrose Finest. And uh, he's trying to be quiet. It's all right. Try it. Doesn't matter. It's all good. I'm not a professional like Carl. He's, uh, he, he does about 100 takes on everything where I'm like, it'll do. And it still comes like rubbish. <laughs> I went down the wrong way. That's what she said. So this is great, but check it out. Check it out now. Nice big field for drone flying later. And a fairly decent woodland. I'm going to try and find a little spot just to clear to get the Force 10 up because I decided not to bring a hammock into the woodlands like a fool. I ran out of time packing the other day, so uh, I think it's going to end up being somewhere here. We are on a bit of a slope though, so mm, watch this space. I think it's gonna have to be here. I always seem to end up camping on a slope. I was on one last night. Last time I was in Dartmoor, I was on the side of a blinking mountain. Doesn't look much on the video, but it'll be enough to annoy you in the night. Right, I'm going back to my beer now. And then we'll set up tents and uh, show you around that a little bit later on. Well, here we are. We have set up camp and uh, the heavens have opened. It's about nine-ish, I think, at night. We haven't actually got dinner on yet because Carl's been lazy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the, the, it's, the weather was just so bad. So what we've done is we've popped a little old tarp over the far pit and we've uh, 
We spent our evening just prepping the firewood on the blinds you now. There's Carl. Hello. We've got a big tarp over us. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. Got a big DD, 3x3 three three, I think. Um, my tent is somewhere over there. I'm not going to bother going out to show you Carl's setup. He's got a, I think it's a DD hammock, isn't it? That's it, yeah. I'll show that to you in the morning if the weather's a bit more clement. But uh, yeah, we're going to attempt a spit roast chicken on that. Mm. But the, uh, the weather is definitely going to be our biggest challenge tonight. It is absolutely bucketing it down. Bucketing? I'm sorry, I'm slurring a little bit. I've, uh, I've had a few beers tonight, so, and nothing to eat. But maybe you can hear the, the rain on the tarp all in there. So thank goodness we packed a tarp. Or I packed a couple of tarps. Um, we shall see what the evening brings. Worst case scenario, it's going to be some steamed vegetables. Boiled actually, not steamed. I meant to bring my um, my backup emergency pack. I'll, I'll whisper so he can't hear me. Just just in case it was rubbish. But I left it in the car. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens. So wish us luck. Um, I'll try and film a bit more later on. But weather being being as it is, it's uh, not really suitable for the camera. I've got a little GoPro, so maybe I'll switch to that a bit later on. That's waterproof. I'm just so glad I'm not in that bivvy. I know I keep going on about it, but it really was rubbish. Lovely woodland, though. Let's see if I can get a bit. Nah, you can't really see much in this. But um, I'll show you around tomorrow morning. Carl's Patch. What a lucky man he is. I hope the weather's good in the morning. I'll get the drone up and you can have a proper, a proper look. Right, let's get this started. Got the SE here. This is uh, pretty solid this week. But... Oh. I'll tell you what, that SE is good for something. Not a lot, but it's great. Great for splitting wood. Especially tough stuff like this. It just makes it so easy. As long as you've got something good to whack it with, you're in business. I'm really glad I bought it this time. I really wasn't sure if I would, but would. Uh, if, I, if I would, but why not? Like a knife through butter. Wow, look at this. What time is it now? About 10. Got a bit of that. Goose fat. Stuffing, a whole chicken. Lots of potatoes, they're big potatoes as well, good. Fire's coming along nicely, despite the rain. Tarp is holding up. Let's turn up the light there a bit. So I'm out of breath, I should have been cutting wood. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get this spit over in a minute and insert that stick right up that chickens. Well, we're getting there folks, it's 20 to 11. I reckon uh, that old bird's got a good hour, hour and a half to go, easy. And uh, the rain is eased, so we're gonna process some more firewood. We found some nice big logs there. They're keeping old Chicky going. But uh, bad news, we're out of beer and booze and all the other good things. So it's just a waiting game now, and I'm gonna eat that bad boy and then go to bed. That's my plan anyway. Well, we've got some roasties going on there. And goose fat, more like uh, deep fried, but that's okay. One whole jar of goose fat. Chicky is coming along. Fire is doing well. We found a nice sort of big log we're chopping up. Time check, 10 to 12. We may, nah, we won't eat this side of midnight. I reckon, I've been saying another hour for about three hours. I reckon half 12, we'll eat. Early breakfast. Early breakfast, exactly. Because somebody forgot my breakfast. It's all right, we'll sort something out. <laughs> I'm very disappointed. No, I'm not. I don't really eat that much breakfast anyway, so I'm not too fussed. 
and this uh, this feast will see me through probably till tomorrow. Well, actually, it's nearly tomorrow. You know what I mean. Uh, sleeping beauty. Right, so um, I'll show you around my quarters. It's a bit of an angle because of the, the lay of the land, but it did the job. <coughs> so this is the F10 Force 10 Nitro Lite 200 Plus, the plus being the porch part here. So, there's the porch, please excuse the mess, the ground sheet is a handmade one, I don't want to pay so much for theirs, normally that will cover the whole area but I just threw it in last night. Here's some sleeping quarters, I've got the Rab neutrino bag there, I uh, can't remember, 600, Rab neutrino endurance 600, it's a little damp, got a bit wet yesterday from the lovely bivvy. I mean, you don't have to have that orange bit in, you could you could sleep without that, but I quite like the fly sheet. Another door here opens up, there's a vent at the top. If you're cooking or you just want to have a look out, see what's going on. I haven't put the guidelines out at the sides, just at the ends. It's a great tent. I think it's, uh, I'll put the weight on the screen. I think it's about 1.7 kilos all in. So you could get two people in there, three at an absolute squeeze if you are uh, in an emergency and you need to use the gear shelter bit. Right, so that's where I had my tent. So nothing left, of course, as you would expect. Just a nice dry patch. I'm not going to bother covering it over and all that because it's uh, it's a regular place for Carl and um, no one else comes here, so that's fine. Carl's just finishing up, packing away the last few bits and bobs, and then we're going to make tracks and um, grab a bit of breakfast en route and some fresh water, etc., from the car, and then uh, decide where we're going to go next. We were going to go to Pile's Cops originally but um, for various reasons we decided not to go there and then we were thinking about fur tour but time is a little bit against us um, as always things take a lot longer to do than, than you anticipate yeah, so it's all good we're going to chill and just uh, head back to the car grab some breakfast as I say and then plan our next move so far
you can hear me over the wind. That is Cosden Hill over there, where I went on one of my Dartmoor adventures with some guys. And then, way back over here, and find it somewhere over there. We camped last night, I think. So I'm told, anyway. Uh, it's a little bit windy up here. I'm shielding the mic, but we'll see. Oh, he's there. <laughs> your, your bag was flapping. Oh, was it? My bag was flapping. Ah. Say hello, Carl. Hello, Carl. I knew he was going to do that. <laughs> so we've had a good time, me and Carl. Yeah, didn't work out to plan, but the best things normally don't, do they? So. I haven't actually been on Dartmoor yet, and I, I don't think I'm going to talk much because I think this audio is going to be pants anyway. But you get the idea where we are. Uh, what time are we? It's five o'clock. We've got about an hour of light left, so uh, we're going to crack on. It's a little bit windy, um, as you can see from the tent. And uh, once I bring you outside, the sound quality will degrade. But look at the views up here, they're just amazing. Few bits, a few bits out that I'm just trying to dry. Sleeping bag, various things. So yeah, so that's my uh, that's my setup there, and you can see the wet from yesterday. The wind is just pushing this way pushing the tent onto that inner fly so I'm going to try and tighten that up somewhat. I'm going to have to do that with two hands in a minute. Just brings it off. Otherwise it's holding up nicely. Right, I need to get some dinner on. I'm starving. Right, bedtime and um, I took some advice from online. I've got myself a hot water bottle. Now Jean, fill it up with near boiling water chuck it in the sleeping bag about 20 minutes before you're going to go to bed and that is going to be lovely morning glampers so it is I'll have to check my watch got past 7 on Tuesday the 13th of March 2018 and um, my Dartmoor wild camp and hike turned out to be not in Dartmoor at all I haven't technically got on to Dartmoor yet. <clears throat> when we, uh, when I met with Carl, we went to his permission woodland, which is just outside of the Dartmoor Park. And um, today we're on an old bronze fort, and I forget the name, but I'll put it on the screen here. Which is a permission camp in Dartmoor area, but not technically on the moor. If you know what I mean. Nevertheless, I've had a good time. And um, really this morning is um, pack up and go home. It's always the worst bit, isn't it, packing up? But it's got to be done. So last night I slept really well. I, it was so cold standing outside. Um, Carl wanted, bless him, to sit up and chat. And I felt a bit bad because I was just cold to the core. So I went to bed. I think I was in my tent at 8 o'clock, 8.30. And um, yeah... It's one of those things, isn't it? If you're cold, you're cold. 
because I went to bed with a hot water bottle. My, my nail gene. So, good tip that. It really did work. It lasted into the small hours. It's alright, I've got hiccups now. The Vango did alright, considering I packed it up soaking wet yesterday. It was, this part was dry or dried out very quickly. And I think the wind coming from that end where you are all the way down through here quite it was quite forceful last night that helped dry it out and it rained about an hour ago so it's wet again <laughs> but not to worry these things happen these things happen right I'm putting off the in inevitable and I've got to get out into that cold wind and Start striking down camp. Yesterday, but somebody forgot the breakfast. Sorry, forgot he got his breakfast, but not mine. So you didn't eat it, though, did you? you no, you'd have felt bad. So it's all coming together now. I'm looking forward to that. Now I've packed away the tent. The sun is out, of course, which is lovely. Oh, there we go. It's better. Do not adjust your screen. So I'm looking minging. Look at this view. Beautiful. The wind's dropped. I've managed to get the drone up, so hopefully you'll get some uh, aerial footage of this. Is it a Bronze Age fort? Is it a Bronze Age fort? I can't remember. I've managed to get the drone up, and hopefully that will give you an idea of where this fort would have been. I can't remember if it's Iron Age or Bronze Age. I'll, again, I'll put it in the, the uh, underneath the captions there. Bird song. That's what I woke up to this morning. Lovely. Should we have a little look over the ledge? You want to see over there? Yeah? Come on then. Just put my hand over the, uh, the microphone there. Hopefully that will shield you a little bit. Look at that, hey? England's finest. So yeah, I didn't didn't get to Dartmoor, which was um, which was a bit of a shame, but uh, still had a good time and still outdoors. So I guess that's what counts. I'm really looking forward to this fry up now. I don't normally have a, a fry up in the morning. A bit of porridge normally for me, but I didn't want to be rude to my host. He's made the effort of carrying it all out, so um, why not? That's where I was pitched last night, just there. We uh, ate just underneath the tree there at the top. The wind was pretty bad, so we didn't really do any filming. And uh, Carl's all packed away. Oh, no, it's not. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, because I'm cooking. Oh, my God. How many are coming? 100. <laughs> Make up for yesterday. Yeah, double, double portions. Ooh. Dish up. Time to dish up. Perfect. That's what you said last night. <laughs> yeah, you loved it though. Sorry, you're going to have to retake that now, aren't you? No. <laughs> it's all going in, and that's what you said last night. Yeah, I thought I'd get that in as well. Hey. Look at that. I forgot my plate. It's Dartmoor Explorer, aka Bushcraft Tidy or Tidy something. Bushcraft. Tidy Bushcraft, aka to be confirmed. Dishing up. Cheers, mate. This looks good. Hope you enjoy. <clears throat> Not the best angle, I grant you. Let's see. 
Mmm. Yummy. Cheers. Mmm. It's crafty. Mmm. Mmm. Couldn't run back to the car and get the ketchup, could you? No. <laughs> what better you cannot find a better place than mm. look at that scene. I agree. Well, breakfast has been eaten and very nice it was too, so thank you for that, uh, Carl. Very good, mate. So, another trip comes to an end. Always the worst part, isn't it? The drive home and all the kit to put away. <laughs> but if you don't do it, then uh, you don't get to experience the outdoors. Look at this. I've been really lucky packing up in the dry. Certainly a beautiful place. So apologies I didn't actually, um, let's turn that screen around. So apologies I didn't actually get onto the moor properly, but circumstance dictated that it wasn't meant to be this time. But I hope I've managed to cobble something of interest together for you to watch. So let me know in the, uh, in the comments section below where you've been on Dartmoor or where you'd like to go and uh, perhaps where you'd like to see me camp next. Well, that's probably all the video I'm going to do now for this, this trip. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.